And when the nation came into existence um, and, and it's not getting better um, and there are a lot of people that are desiring freedom that are desiring a change they don't know what the future is going to hold for the nation um, and so their soul is at a state where it needs to hear from the Lord Thank <clears throat> you. 
13 verses, so we're going to read through these 13 verses responsibly. When everybody has found it, if you'll say amen. amen. Praise God. All right. Beginning at verse 1. <clears throat> Ho, every one that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. And incline your ear and come to me Here and your soul shall live And I will make an everlasting covenant with you Even the sure mercies of David Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people A leader and commander to the people Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not Nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee Because of the Lord thy God and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void. But it shall prosper, accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Together, instead, instead of, of the thorns thorn shall, shall come up, up the fir tree, tree and, and instead, instead of, of the briar shall, shall come, come up the myrtle, myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut, cut off. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this, the word of God. Thank you, Lord God, for the people of God. And we honor you and praise and give glory to your great and marvelous name. We lift you up. And magnify you because there's none other like you. None in the earth or the heavens above. For you are gracious and plenty and mercy. And full of all goodness and truth. And we magnify you. We bless you. And we honor you. We lift you up and we glorify you. Because your name is worthy of praise. And you're a strong tower against our enemies. And hallelujah. You gracious, abundant in goodness and truth. Oh God, and so therefore you are worthy of glory and you're worthy of honor. Hallelujah. I magnify you. I laud you and extol you. I bless you and I reverence you because there's no God like our God, a mighty lion of the tribe of Judah. We bless you. Hallelujah. Glory and honor to you, Lord God. Um, for you are the righteous lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah. To break every chain and every fetter, to lose every band of wickedness, and to let the oppressed go free. Oh God, our righteousness. Lift up now the light of your holy countenance uh, and let it shine forth upon us anew and afresh oh god and i will give your name to honor and your name to praise oh god be lifted up in this place uh, be glorified uh, oh son of the most high hallelujah glory to god thank you lord thank you lord hallelujah to the lamb glory to your name 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. And fill the atmosphere with your glory. Fill it with your praise and your power, Lord, that your people might give you glory, that we might give honor to your great name. None is so glorious in power. Majesty and dominion belongeth unto thee, O great God of the ages. Um, hallelujah. Let the sun shine upon us uh, and rise upon us again, for our light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us now. Cause us, Lord God, um, to be renewed in strength and vigor by your divine power, Lord God. God, um, and we'll give your name to honor, Lord, uh, and we'll give your name to glory, O oh God, um, in Jesus' name, uh, and everybody said, um, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap for his mercy. Bless your name, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. God placed this word upon my heart concerning the word of God, verses 10 and 11 were words of emphasis. And, uh, but as I studied, there are other things that he seemed to have brought out. But verse 10 says, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and return not thither, but watereth the earth, and makes it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be, that goeth forth out of my mouth, and it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish, somebody say accomplish, that which I please, and it shall prosper, somebody say prosper, in the thing whereto I send it. In other words, wherever I send my word, it's going to prosper. Hallelujah. It's going to bring results. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I believe God wanted to reassure us of the faithfulness of his covenant promises. Isaiah chapter 53 it is said it talks much of the Messiah much of Jesus and it talks about uh, you know the favorite passage of scripture we talked about Isaiah he was wounded for our transgression and Isaiah 54 a commentator said it talks much about the church and then Isaiah 55 which we just read it said it talks much about not only the invitation, but the grace of God. So we look at it a little closer. Isaiah, of course, was prophet. Said he was quite intelligent in the natural, wise and smart, wise in international affairs, national. Perhaps one of the more brilliant ones out of all the prophets. And uh, he prophesied somewhere during the reign of four kings. Uh, there was Jotham, his son Ahaz, Ahaz's son Hezekiah, and Hezekiah's son Manasseh. During that time, he was Michael. Micah was his contemporary, and um, but it says somewhere between 740 and 690 uh, BC. Um, and the background is found in Second Kings chapter 15 and uh, through verse chapters 21, where you see the reign of these four kings. Um, he prophesied to the southern kingdom of Judah. And the northern kingdom was Israel, as you, some of you know, at least, and where the ten tribes were part of. But Judah was the southern kingdom where it just had Judah and Benjamin. And the Bible was talking about the promises. Now, the Bible says, through Abraham, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. And so Isaiah and Micah prophesied concerning the fulfillment of these blessings, coming blessings. And so just to, I'm going to do a little brief summary um, of these according to some of the uh, studies. Verse 1 through 5 basically is dealing with the invitation. 
He said, Ho, come, whoever is thirsty, let him drink of the waters of life freely. And it's sort of like Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30, where he says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. And uh, uh, verses 2 through 4 deals with the argument to enforce this invitation. Verse 5 is a promise of the success of the invitation among the Gentiles when you see it, because it talks about them coming in to salvation. Verses 6 through 9 deals with the exhortation to repentance and restoration or reformation with great encouragement to hope or pardon thereupon. We'll perhaps reiterate that a little bit as we go on. Verses 10 and 11 deal with the ratification with a certain efficacy of the word of God, the, the effectiveness of God's word. And I think that was the thought that uh, came to me. In verses 12 and 13, of course, deals with an instance of the accomplishment of the word and in the return of the Jews out of their captivity. He prophesied of what would happen and uh, somewhere or another, I think it was six, somewhere 680 B.C. when uh, the Judah went into captivity. Israel was in captivity first in 722. Those of you that did this study, you remember, by the Assyrians. And then there, God would warn Judah. He's saying, to, look at your sister. You see what your sister did now. You see what happened to them. You don't need to be like that. But anyway, uh, eventually they did the same thing, and so they went into captivity by Babylon. And so that's just a brief summary of what this chapter 55 is about. And so just, just briefly to review the, the thought of the invitation. Right in the midst of uh, Judah and their leaders were just failing the Lord and Judah was you know they were like backslidden basically and but in the midst of that God would always look beyond where they were and through the prophets and show them what he was going to do in the future so he begins to tell them about this time of grace while they struggle, of course, under the law to keep the law and all those things, and they've just kept failing. The day was going to come when there's a day of grace and when God was going to send his word, and his word was going to accomplish what God sent it out to do. And uh, But he says, Ho, oh, everyone that Thirsters, come ye to the waters, and he that had no money, come ye buy. So how do you buy without money? Come ye buy and eat. Ye come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Then verse 2, he says, Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Listen, hearken diligently to me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Now, see if I can review, but briefly point out what the Lord emphasized to me. The invitation says, everyone that's thirsty, it does not limit who can come. There's it is the, the, the invitation of salvation is universal. It's a universal call, right? Anybody, everyone, whoever is thirsty. Somebody said the word thirsty implied in this instance repentance, a person getting tired of themselves, tired of human effort, tired 
of failing, tired of the misery, tired of just the things that are happening and, 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 and to the point where their soul thirsts. You know, you can, you can eat in your natural and eat and be full and yet you're still not happy. And you can eat and eat and drink and your soul, it doesn't touch your soul. Your soul can still be in a state of dissatisfaction. The soul can still be in a state that I need a change. I, I, I need something else. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just doing routine and I'm, I'm really tired of the routine. There's got to be more to life than just the routine. And uh, uh, you may be eating well. You may be eating steaks every day. You may, you may be eating the finest of lamb, but, but, but it doesn't touch the soul. And so uh, Isaiah was speaking the mind of God. Obviously, Israel, he, he says, uh, first of all, everyone that's thirsty, come to the water. Come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, Come ye by and eat. Well, how can you do it? Well, the price has already been paid. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Jesus paid fully the price. And he was looking to that time of the Messiah, which he mentions in um, verse 3, the bottom. The sure mercies of David. But he was, he was really looking beyond because when, in, in that verse, he was basically talking about Christ, the seed of David. And... So in this time, he's saying this is what anyone that have a true thirst in their heart for righteousness or for a change in their lives, their soul is hungry. How many souls are hungry today? How many of you, you know, you, how many of you just kind of, you, you need to see some revival. You desire to see revival in the church, revival in the land, revival in the home, something to change. You know, there's all kinds of things happening in our world. There, there's restrictions taking place and more restrictions will take place. And so the freedom looks like it's slowly corroding and, and people are not, not able to do the things that they once did when, when the nation came into existence and, and, and it's not getting better and there are a lot of people that are desiring freedom, that are desiring a change they don't know what the future is going to hold for the nation and, and so their soul is at a state where it needs to hear from the Lord yeah. hallelujah and uh, such a time they were living in then the ministers uh, or the uh, Israel's, Judah's leaders were not uh, uh, really doing uh, that and bringing the kind of nourishment that God intended. And so God showed a time when he would raise up shepherds after his own heart and the Messiah would come and the free gospel would be preached and it would no longer be based on somebody trying to do the best they could but it was going to be based upon the gospel the word of God that would come and bring grace and liberate the soul from the state and break the bondage of sin and Satan from awful people's lives through the mere power of the gospel so it, it, it was something to bring hope uh, to, to, to them at this time. And uh, so everyone that thirsts, come to the waters. And he that had no money, come buy and eat. Buy wine and milk. Wine and milk, which symbolizes that which nourishes the body and revives, revives the spirit. Wine was said that um, uh, it was indication of the gospel as cheering and invigorating the soul, the gospel, when the gospel would be preached. Milk, of course, was its nourishing quality. And so he says, why do you labor for that which satisfies not? And what basically he was, he was I believe he was saying, it was like a mirage of personal happiness based upon earthly advantage and blessings. Earthly advantages and blessings. Some people don't are not blessed the same way others are blessed, right? Uh, some people have more in this life. But those aren't the true blessings. 
Those aren't the blessings that satisfies the soul. You remember the man that had everything and he said, uh, 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 okay, so take it easy right now. Come eat, drink, and be merry, you know, and uh, just take it easy. And then the Lord said, you fool, what, what, uh, uh, this night your soul is going to be required of you. Then what will those things do? So these things don't satisfy the longing soul. And, and, and but what, what kind of stood out in that area was how Israel, like today, people put their hopes and their dreams into that which cannot satisfy and so, brothers and sisters, we can spend all of our lives on this earth trying to do and obtain the things in this world which will never satisfy the soul. And let's say if I spend 20 to 30 years of my life trying to get ahead and trying to look good in the world, trying to, to receive status. Um, and after the long period of time, at the 29th year, all of a sudden my health failed. I, I want you to hear what I'm saying today is that and, and all of that labor to, to get there could have been in vain. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? And so God was, was through Isaiah's telling them those aren't the true blessings. Those don't, they can't touch the immortal soul. And, and, and I believe for us today, it is important for us to understand the things that truly satisfy. And only Jesus, somebody say only Jesus, can satisfy the immortal soul of man. Hallelujah. And therefore, he said, why do you, you uh, 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 um, labor for that which never satisfied? Brothers and sisters, I tell you, there are a lot of people in our world today. They've been laboring and trying to get ahead because as best they can understand, if I could just get that, if I could just, just get that, I knew I'd be happy. If I could just get that, I knew I would be happy. And so all of their lives, all of, all of their efforts um, uh, uh, is futile because um, once they get it, there is no happiness. It doesn't bring any happiness.